Hi folks, uh, this is Ralph uh, with a lot of things uh, again. We are doing a segment a video on the Toyota Super Model 34 sewing machine. Uh, one of the, the features on this machine uh, is a blue jeans uh, special uh, riding foot uh, which I'll get to that a little bit later in, in our uh, session here. Uh, the main thing I want to, to show here, I'm going to show you sewing some upholstery and, and utilizing the different pressure feet. Uh, also, I want you to realize that in the manual, um, it's, it's, it's a pretty good manual, it's got a lot of illustrations, but it doesn't tell you the things that I'm about to show you. It doesn't tell you about the sewing the leather and sewing upholstery, which uh, this will do. Uh, the, main, the main thing here is that now I have on the machine what they call a dual purpose Teflon foot which is got a notch on the left and a notch on the right. Uh, also known as a zipper foot but this is a combination uh, welting foot as well. Uh, particularly when utilizing vinyl which a lot of the vinyl has a coating on it. Like uh, this particular fabric right here, this vinyl is marine vinyl and if you try to sew it with the, the normal foot which is the metal foot it's not it'll sew a little bit and then the stitches will get very small because it's got like a rubber coating on it so if you switch to the straight stitch Teflon it works absolutely wonderful and this is Teflon under this proper foot here and it's very very slippery also you have another foot I can see it here uh, what happened to the zigzag foot? Uh, let me stand up here. Maybe I can find it. Oh, there it is. My other hand. There, I got three arms here. Uh, this foot is the zigzag foot. So this is a combination zigzag and straight. Uh, right now, we're going to. Uh, I'm going to show you how to sew this uh, this welting or or cording. And uh, if you just take this here, and uh, you, you take and start it. Uh, along the edge here as I did with this one here and then you just keep it close sometimes it's just a small sample especially when you're starting out and you're new at this here you might have to go across it twice to get it firmly up against the, the welting or the cording here now we have a welting foot also, but there again, if you go to sew it with the top side of this uh, fabric, that's not going to work because that, that's metal. Uh, they are now working on, on making one of these uh, out of Teflon. Uh, that's why we utilize this particular foot here for this, this work here. It does a fine job. Now, once you get this done here, now I'm going to take and sew on the two sides of your fabric like this here was done. And let's see, let me grab, um, uh, let me see here, let's grab a couple of these here, pieces here. And this is how you do this. And if you just take the fabric like so, okay. Normally, if you're, you're, I'm working with a small section here, but if you're working with a larger section, uh, you can actually, you want to leave an allowance on the edges here. And I, I generally leave it like a half an inch, uh, no, no more than that. That way, you can get started on it pretty, pretty nice and easy. And you just take and slide it underneath the pressure foot here. Okay, you might want to lift it just a hair like so and you're going to ride it up against the actually the welt which is here alright so you just take this here and you get a little started here you just start it in the fabric so you line it up and there you go when you get to the end just turn your hand wheel to where the the needle gets to its highest point, and there you are. So you can see we did this here. Now, 
Uh, if you want to do it over again, like I say, when you first are, are, are learning this here, uh, it's a good idea to do that. And we'll just take this here. Once you get the feel of it, you can just feed it like I'm doing here. But watch your fingers. Because that needle can go through your fingers. So now, if you'll notice that, see it's nice and, and tight on the sides there, see there? See, nice and tight on your welting and your cording. So now once you have done it the proper way, uh, most of the time we will do it two, two rows there, and that gives it added strength. Now you want to cut this trim off here, but you want to leave a, a quarter of an inch, uh, no less than a quarter of an inch from the cording. So you just take your scissors and just cut that that excess off. If you leave it, try to get a quarter inch as you go along, then you're going to have troubles. Give yourself about a half an inch and you'll, you won't have any problems. And then there you are, you've, you've done your cording very nicely. Now, this particular foot is what they call a quarter inch welting foot. But that means you cannot utilize more than a quarter inch in diameter counting the cord and the fabric, which you got four layers. You see? So that would be uh, sufficient. You can't go any more than that. So you can't have this more than an eighth of an inch, that actual uh, cording. So remember that. If it says a quarter inch, you get a quarter inch of this wealthy, it's not going to work. But it will work if you utilize this foot, because you're not having to go through the tunnel. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, uh, and, and this will work on, on the leather as well, and you want to use this on, on the leather. And I'm going to take and remove this foot. You get a couple screwdrivers with this here, but I like using this one here because it's longer and plus uh, it gives you more torque. Unfortunately I had broken my right arm at uh, the top humerus so I'm now just finally being able to utilize my arm so it's, it's uh, good to get back and uh, using both arms here. Now I'm going to put this straight stitch foot back on and the straight foot, we're going to sew the other fabric just normal. I guess I could have used a smaller one. <laughs> there, let's use a small one there. All right, so now I, I put on the Teflon foot here, and we're going to sew the different fabric. Like here, here's some leather. Now, I went and sewed uh, on this top stitch here. It looks fine. See, it looks wonderful. In fact, I have it way down here on like two, plus two. This goes up to plus five. And if you notice when you turn it over, oh my goodness, the thread laid right on the bottom. So, uh, what, what you have to do, what that means, uh, that the thread has to be tighter on top. So once I zipped it back up to number five, then we got a nice stitch over here. Now, I'm going to do it again over here. And this also has an extra spool pin, which has, has extra holes to give you more tension. Now this is the two layers of softer leather. And I'm utilizing a, a 14 needle and an invisible stitch it is. That means I ran out of thread. So let's put some thread on here. I guess I should have had one ready to go. Well, we're going to rewind the, the bobbin here. All right. So let's take that out of there because that's strictly for threading the machine. So let's wind this baby up here. And then you go around here. I wrap it a few times and 
get it started. Push it over to the right. I guess I need to do more. Went the wrong way. Well, the easiest way. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. is to go through the inner hole of the bobbin. So there's a little hole here and you thread it like so and we'll put it back on hold the one thread, get it started there we go Now this is number 69 upholstery thread. Now you can use up to a 92 on this, but only on the top thread. The bottom thread has to be number 69. Okay, we just drop this in. And this here goes counterclockwise. And then you go into the first opening here. Slide, I always hold the bobbin with my index finger here and go to the other opening over here it's right there and you just slide it along there replace the little plastic window in fact I found that if you remove this tray it's easier to put this back in All right. there you go alright now we're going to reset our top threading. So we go through the top spindle here first. And if you notice, we're used lies in the large uh, thread stand. And that's for your, your larger thread. And then you go around this little guide on top here. And then you come forward. Now I always just hold this thread here to make sure it goes through the tension unit through here nice and firmly. Because it is thicker thread than normal. And being a new machine, it's like anything else, you have a little break-in period. And if you come down straight down through here, as I did, you come down through here, come around, there's like a little arrow here. And the manual is very explicit. And this is your take-up arm. And you go from the right to the left, back down. And then there's a thread guide right above the needle clamp, right below the needle clamp. And if you just take and I don't know if you can see it. Do you see it there? Wait a minute. Let me tilt it back here. There we go. Right to the back. Okay. And I ran it through here. Oh. Ah, hold on. Hold on. Just hold it there a minute, Katie. Okay. There we go. Okay. And then we'll just set it back down. Bring the needle back up here. And we'll thread it from the front to the back. All right. There is a needle threader. Uh, I can thread the needle faster and quicker by just doing it that way. But uh, sometimes uh, the needle threader works fine with uh, regular thread. It doesn't always like the, the thicker thread. Okay, and then you just take your trail, your thread back. You got two layers. You get the top and bottom thread, but you want to make sure when you uh, pull it back, if you pull it back together, you don't know if the, the bottom is looser than the top. So pull the bottom and to make sure it has a, a firm uh, pull, not tight, but not loose. It's, it's generally preset uh, you know, from the factory, so you shouldn't have any problem. Uh, your top thread, when dealing with this here, I would set on number five, plus five. When you get the machine, you'll probably be on two. All right, then we just set that back. All right, now we got, uh, let's go back to our thinner leather. All right, we'll take a look here. Now, you'll notice that that stitch is much, much better here because that first stitch was actually on about one or two. And if you need more tension, you can go on the top of the machine 
where the thread the first threading uh, starts you can actually wrap around this as many as three times and that will give you added tension three times would be the max it depends on, on what uh, fabric you're using uh, what vinyl you're using and what leather Now see that, by giving it one more wrap around there, you will notice that the tension increased properly. And there you are, that last row, see there, perfect. And then there it is right there. So that's, that's sewing to uh, two layers. This is about um, three and four ounce. And you notice it's, it's very uh, flimsy. It's not like uh, tooling leather. You get into tooling leather, uh, you're getting in uh, the stuff that's much more dense, uh, then it's not uh, favorable for that. Although, now this has got, oh, that's four layers. Well, let's see. Let's try something else here. All right, this one here has got, this is a little bit heavier. This is like four ounce. Okay, let's pull this thread. You want to leave yourself a trailer of thread. I always leave plenty of thread so there's nothing worse than it popping out. And you want to make sure it's at its top cycle when you do this. And then once you put your, your, your leather back or your fabric underneath there, whatever it is, start it, just turn the hand wheel, start it into the material and step on the gas. And don't baby it. If you go try to go real slow, uh, it, it's not. <laughs> It's like um, like going uphill, you know. If you're going uphill, you got to step on the gas. So when you start dealing with the leather, now if I go like this here, real f slow. But sometimes, if you're on the wrong cycle of this counterweight, that's why if you bring this at the top and you're going down, you have more success. There we go. All right, now, so that's a little bit heavier than, than this leather. All right, and then we'll see what else we got. This is another leather here, and that's that's a little bit thicker leather here. That's five ounce, and uh, let me use it. No, this one, this is fine. This is fine. But if you're doing upholstering and, and stuff of that nature, this this normally you wouldn't be sewing this this thick. Of uh, upholstery, you normally would be this here or this here, which is uh, one and two. All right. Okay. There we go. Yeah, that might need some more tension even on the bottom there. The top looks fine. The bottom, we need some more tension. So let's just wrap it around there again, like so. There we go. Top top always requires more tension than the bottom. The top thread's always doing the work. It goes down through here, goes down, and when it comes back up, it's got to come back to all these layers and then make the loop. Where the bottom just sets only halfway. So once it comes out, particularly on vinyl. All right. Okay, a lot better. Now, if you notice that stitch there, you see how it's, it's different where this is still pulling down underneath. Once I set that another wrap around, then the stitch became perfect. Almost perfect. <laughs> it's like people use the term uh, exact or whatever that's it's everybody's interpretation, but this is the secret of, of the machine. <coughs> if you need more tension, you, even though you have the maximum here, wrap it around this, what they call the bobbin rewind guide, and this is the first guide of the shredding the machine. But you go through your two holes, this even gives you more tension. Um, because this, 
thread stand, you want to set it towards the back on the right hand side. And uh, if you don't have this and don't go around there, then it's flopping in the wind and it can come loose at, at various times. Okay, so we got this done, we got that done. We got, we sewed through our vinyl. This is uh, marine vinyl, it's one, two, three, six layers. I had a customer the other day that said it wouldn't sew two layers of vinyl. And I says, well, I said, that, that's interesting because um, I know it'll sew more than two, and if it didn't sew two, then you must have done something incorrect. He said, no, I followed the instructions completely. I said, did you use the proper foot? He says, well, uh, what do you mean, what, what foot? Well, right then, gave me an indication that she didn't read the supplement sheets. So when you open up the box, you will find uh, a sheet of added information, which is all right. I don't have it right with me, but uh, there it is. Open up box, it says, read before sewing. And the first one of the things it says in there is using marine vinyl, or if you don't know what it is, uh, you'll, you'll test it, you'll know real quick. It, it'll sew a little bit with a regular metal foot, and then it will uh, slow down and make very short stitches. Then you know you need to go to the Teflon foot. Uh, so that's what it was. She was using the metal foot, and that, that does not like uh, marine vinyl. In fact, let's put it on here and I'll show you what it does. Okay. All right, now we put that back on there, raise that baby up there, and let's, let's start here and see what happens. And you will see that it starts towing very, very short stitches. There, there it is, little tiny stitches there. So it just doesn't like, it's like trying to slide on concrete with tennis shoes. It doesn't work. So, but with a Teflon foot, it works beautifully. So let's put that baby back. That's the straight stitch one. That's strictly for straight sewing, incidentally. Okay. So we got the, uh, that out of the way. Uh, six layers. There's no need to sew six layers, but uh, I just wanted to show you that it will sew the vinyl with no problem. Uh, then, of course, we got this done here, the, the welting. Uh, this here, now this here is like, uh, this is, this is three, there's how many layers, that's, well, that's four layers. I don't know if it's going to do that. Nah, it's not going to do that. That's, that's, I can't even get it underneath the foot. Okay, so now let's take, yeah, uh, here we go. Here's some, here's some, uh, here's some vinyl. Yeah, this is even tougher vinyl. Yeah. All right. Nice stitch. Wonderful. That's four layers. Now let's try another two. So that, that sort of maxes it out. There we go. Now, a little noise you hear is you, it's, it's the belt. That's just uh, the belt, all it is. If one was to, to do this here, then one would need to readjust uh, the belt, but there's no need to sew six layers. Um, you can sew six layers out of the softer. That's softer uh, vinyl there. This is this a little bit more rigid stuff. Okay, now we got um, leather jackets. Now here's here's some uh, leather jacket leather here. Oh my God! There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight layers. Let's see what we got here. I think I lost some thread. Yeah. 
sometimes the, the thread, especially polyester thread or, or nylon thread, this is nylon, and can can fray if it's uh, if it's fraying like that there there's two reasons for it there's something in the fabrication that's uh, that they've used some glue and it's gotten hard like some uh, backing board or some different materials that they use and I could see here yeah they glued this some of the stuff here so there's some glue in there and that that'll cause that to happen all right, let's try it on that side. All right. Okay, so there, I did a nice, nice stitch there. Okay, so we got that aspect of, of what we're trying to accomplish with a welting foot. Uh, there's some, here's some suede leather. Uh, let's try this baby. Yeah, yeah. I used that on one of my commercial machines, which this is not a commercial machine. Yeah, this has got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's five layers. That's almost a quarter of an inch. Okay. Then we got, uh, where was that lamp? Oh, here we go. Now this is uh, softer leather, which a lot of our, our customers will use uh, on this softer leather here. This is, that's almost uh, six ounces there. And so if you were doing upholstery and just run to sew two layers, different uh, settings here uh, for the straight and the zigzag, uh, and it shows you in the in the book exactly what what to do. And your your tension is the thing. Your bobbin winding. Once you push it to the right, that put, takes it out of the the needle shaft uh, movement. And uh, once it's full, it'll it'll stop. You also have what they call the top pressure release. This is very important. Uh, this gives you a lot of pressure on the foot. Uh, and sometimes you don't need all that pressure. If you're just sewing the normal stuff and that. Uh, even some of the vinyl and some uh, of the leather you might make some little marks for the feed dogs then you want to release this here and just turn it uh, so it's not so tight and that uh, generally will alleviate any problems uh, of making any marks on, on the leather okay I think uh, we're good to go in that respect there's one other thing that um, I'm going to show you, uh, and just in case that uh, we have situations where a customer will overdo something and turn something the wrong way or put something underneath there and then, and then uh, possibly throw the position of the needle uh, out of position. And what happens is that the needle could start hitting the edge of the needle plate. Well, there's, uh, then that means it's out of alignment. Uh, it's a very quick fix. All we have to do is, uh, let me move this little plug here. And I'm going to turn this around. And I'm going to remove the screw here. Let's see if I got the right screwdriver. I think I need the Phillips. You want to grab me a Phillips, Katie? And just uh, take and use the Phillips screwdriver and remove this. Remove this little slide. <laughs> I should have had this done.
There we go. All right. Okay. Now the back of the manual does show you how to remove this. Let me get this back into position. And let me get a little light here. So you notice that the needle shaft, in fact let me just take this thread loose here. You don't need to have that there. Okay. If you just follow my light here, here is the screw adjustment for that swing of the um, needle. And you notice you can go left or right. Okay, here we go. Okay, I want you to see the needle movement. Do you see it moving? Is it moving there, Katie? Katie is my Yes, ma my film director here. <laughs> See? Yep. See it? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, is it moving back and forth, front to back? Do you see that needle? Is it going front or back? Towards the front? Front. Huh? Front. Okay. So what you need to do is it's just like an eccentric here, and you want to get it into the center of the opening here, plus you want to gauge it to where it's in the center on the back side as well. There we go. Okay. So that's what that's all you have to do. Once you do that, got it all lined up, you're good to go. Then we're going to put this little door back on. And uh, this is very simple. If you look at this door, you have this pin here. That's what they call the positioning and you want to have that lined up like so and then you just push down on it get it over here there's a little end clip push it forward okay make it lined up there and then we'll put that screw back in and that's how you make that adjustment it, it rarely happens but you just have to look at if it's hitting the needle plate then you know what's happened And so we just tightened up this back section here. Hold on, let me get this back here. Take my good arm. Okay. All right, then we're, we're good to go. Um, if you're using just the smaller spools of thread, uh, if you notice that uh, you will be getting uh, one of the... Um, Guterman spools. Uh, you might try it on here, but make sure you leave this felt pad so it doesn't spin out of control. Um, and but th that should work uh, as well. So other than that, there uh, we want to also remember that you have the feed dogs that go up and down, and there's the switch to raise and lower the feed dog. So make sure. If something's not right and nothing's feeding properly, you want to check your dial on the front and also check to make sure your feed dog control is in the up position, which is in the back side of the machine. Okay, so now all we have to do is, is um, if you notice, and once you have the manual up, it's very self-explanatory about where it's going here. Four is your longer stitch on this light gray area here. You know, nor normal is probably around two. When I'm sewing the, the vinyl and leather, I generally set it on four. You have a reverse stitch, but you do not go back and reverse. Uh, if you do, go very slowly. Uh, generally, when you get into leather and stuff of that nature, just turn it around and, and go a couple stitches. There are different techniques of uh, finishing off the edge. Uh, of your finishing uh, product on your leather and a lot of times you just have some little super glue at the end cut it real short and give it a dab or there's other clear glue uh, around Gorilla Glue and stuff of that nature. Uh, you'll notice here you've got uh, the white section over here and which is A, B, uh, a, B uh, C to K 
and that, those are all what they call reversible stitches so you just turn it to the A to K which is here and then you turn this according to the letter uh, and then you have like and there's an overcast stitch and there's uh, the double um, stitch there there's another overlock stitch you got actually one two uh, three then you got your blanket stitch or quilting stitch over here on the other section here which is L to S and you turn that up here to L to S and then you get into these stitches and then the, these letters here is like B uh, which is reference to here but so you go beyond that L if you want to go to um, L which is over where are we there it is there's L on 8 and you want to do an L on that one you just line up the L with 8 but you must have it on LS and then you just want your normal stitches your blind hem straight stitch uh, there's your stretch uh, blind hem there's the triple stitch here's your another blind hem stitch uh, which you can sew left or right and then this is your graduated uh, width of the zigzag here okay I think we're good to go um, the, the light switch and the power switch is on the, the right end here uh, if the light uh, doesn't come on just uh, push the button there and it's uh, everything is in the manual uh, read the manual of course watch the video you might have to watch the video a couple times three times uh, something's not going right retrace your steps rethread the machine uh, a lot of little things uh, if you strike the needle plate and break a needle make sure that uh, all of a sudden maybe it's uh, shredding or, or it's jamming uh, there's a couple things that can cause it uh, a, a nick on the side of the plate there can cause it all you have to do is file it down with an emery cloth or you can use a diamond file uh, down inside here there's a shuttle and uh, it tells you how to remove the shuttle you have to remove this needle plate and the shuttle is what holds the bobbin in place that's your shuttle there uh, you can nick that that portion there which is like a a, uh, a nylon in here that blacks the nylon and if you nick that there you just have to sort of buff it down a little bit uh, don't take a knife you can use a diamond file and smooth it down as long as you don't break off the the pickup point there's a little point at the end there as long as you don't break that off which is rare that happens then you'll be fine. You can put it back in there and, and away you go. Okay, folks. Well, I think we've uh, done our, our, our segment on the machine here. Uh, we will be doing some more uh, detailed work uh, in the future. And good luck to you all. And if you have any further questions, you can always give us a call at 800-300-1917. Uh, good luck sewing, and we'll talk to you all later.